some systems built with actors will just do what they're supposed to do and they will move forward based upon one actor sending messages to others and then getting messages back uh, without any kind of outside influence or regularity in what's happening. Not all systems will work that way though. Sometimes you will need to schedule events that are going to happen in the future, possibly at regular intervals. And for this, there is inside of the actor system, there is a value called a scheduler. And the scheduler has a number of methods in it that can be used to schedule things to happen once or schedule them to happen repeatedly. Uh, for each of these, you kind of have two forms. The one uh, takes an argument that is passed by name. And so whatever code is in that argument is going to happen uh, either once or multiple times. And the other one is set up to send a message to a receiver, either once after a delay or repeatedly um, over after some interval. So let's go ahead and let's write a little code that uses this. Uh, we'll close out that and we'll make a new scheduler example. Okay, we'll copy stuff from our simple actor here. Okay, we're not going to do too much with this. We just want to demonstrate that that this uh, can work for us. Let's make a case object and we'll say count. And what our actor here is going to do is when it gets a count, uh, we'll give it a var We'll increment in, we'll print line in, out. And so that would just, you know, it's fairly simple, straightforward as to what we're doing there. We're going to count up when that happens. But instead of, instead of just sending this, the message normally, I mean, clearly we could say actor bang count. And when we run that, we get a one. Let's go ahead and put But instead of just having it happen once, I want to make it happen multiple times. Uh, and so for that, we can use the scheduler in our system. And one way we can demonstrate this is to say schedule once. We get to put in a delay, which is a finite delay from Scala concurrent duration. So let's go ahead and import Scala.concurrent.duration.underscore. Make sure we spell it right. Okay. And then the delay that I want to do here is after one second, I want to say after bang count. And let's see what this is unhappy with. Call my name off. Ah. In order to do this, we are uh, going to need to have an execution context. So as we saw previously, we can do this using the Scala concurrent or implicit val. We can make it so that the dispatcher for the system is available as an execution context for us. Uh, we could also have put another argument on here where we explicitly said 
what execution context we want, but it's generally simpler if we have uh, an implicit one defined. So if I run this, we should get one, and then roughly a second later, we get the two, and then the whole thing shuts down. Instead of doing that once, we could We'll go with the schedule, an initial delay of zero seconds, an interval, actually I'm going to make it so this happens 10 times a second, uh, 100 millis, and I'm going to use actually the other form here, so instead of passing it by name, because you've seen how we can do that, we're going to say that for our actor, we're going to send it the count message. So this version is, for the schedule, it always has an initial delay and then an interval between when things happen. And then you can give it the actor and the message that you want to send there, as opposed to a by name argument. The by name argument lets you do whatever you want. This is for just sending messages. Now this one is going to keep going until things stop. Uh, and so we're going to kind of rudely terminate it as it's counting up 10 times per second. It's probably not the ideal way to do things, but it illustrates what's happening with the system. Now you'll note that this got a lot further than where it kind of uh, might have been expected to. Um, actually, in some ways this raises the interesting question. So this first count is clearly, or this one is clearly from this count. But an interesting question is, which one of these two calls made the two? And it turns out odds are it was this one. Because the schedule once, it does not wait for a second here. It does not block the main thread. It sends something off to the side that will one second later do this, but then it immediately executes this line, which has a delay of zero seconds and says that every 100 milliseconds, so 10 times a second, it should send this message. So odds are the two actually came from this call. Uh, how far should this have counted to? Actually about 22, but you'll notice here then we got a, a dead letter message, which is what happens when there isn't an actor, because this wound up sending a message after the that actor had been terminated. Uh, what might have been a better thing to do here would have been to have it so that, turns out that all of these give us back something that can be canceled. There's a type called uh, cancelable. And we can see this in the API. So each one of these gave us back a, a an ACA actor cancelable. And it has a method on it called cancel. So just using that, we can say that before we actually start the termination, we're going to go ahead and cancel this repeated process. And that way, we shouldn't get the dead letter message. Okay, so that we're going to stop firing these off before we go ahead and do the termination. Um, this is just a helpful way if you have a system where you need to be doing things at regular intervals, uh, but it's an actor-based system, and so you want it to be motivated through a proper actor approach. You don't want to have blocking calls. You don't want to be doing busy waiting. Uh, this is a good way to schedule things to happen, potentially at regular intervals or just after some delay after the previous time.